On this video today, we are going to discuss two amazing consumer electronics from two different time periods, probably from the 80s and the more than likely the 70s. But our first product up for bids here is the Pocket Vision made by Radio Shack and it's catalog number 16-3035. This uh, beautiful little TV was made in China and it operates on a whole ton of batteries that uh, you'll see here. If we push this little button in here on the side, we can remove the battery pack from the back, but we're not gonna do that because I only have one hand at this point. But it comes with this exciting stand and has this gigantic telescoping antenna, telescoping antenna, and uh, has a lot of different features to it. So this again is the Pocket Vision from Radio Shack. And it is a pocket LCD television with two speakers. I don't think it's stereo. It is also NTSC, which means it cannot pick up digital signals from uh, over the air. It can only pick up analog ones. So right now I'm using a little device that uh, I outlined in one of my other videos. You can kind of see it here underneath my dusty TV. It's a little broadcaster that's sending out a NTSC signal through the air in my house. And that's what I'm using to broadcast to this TV. It's on channel 27. But for a little tiny analog LCD TV, the picture quality is really not that bad. Um, it looks pretty good, actually. Let's look at over, over on the side of it here, and you'll see that there's a, a lot of cool jacks on the side. We have a uh, antenna input. We have audio and video inputs and a headphone jack as well as a DC 12 volt input. And all of these are um, 3.5 millimeter uh, jacks. So I found this at a thrift store and just thought it was a unique little TV. I don't recall ever seeing one of these before. The controls across the top are pretty straightforward. You have a power control. You have your UHF and VHF selector. You have a brightness control, channel control, and a volume control. So simply by pressing the button and holding it down, you get some volume. It's a little distorted on the volume, I'm not sure why, but uh, it may just be the settings that I'm using currently on my system. So anyway, again, this is Ultra Vision, and the unique thing about this little pocket TV is its size. It is really a big little TV, almost the size of about the palm of your hand. So uh, picture quality is quite good. And um, it has a removable stand here on the bottom. So this little part here unscrews, and it's really just like a camera mount type screw that plugs into there on the side and it's attached to a mount that you could liter literally mount this TV to a wall somewhere so you could just take it bend it out like that and you could mount this up on the wall somewhere so I thought that was kind of a cool feature as well so right now we're watching uh, a demonstration laser disc on my CLD 980 Pioneer laser disc player and uh, here, I'll put some animation up on there for you. Kind of get an idea of some of the color. I don't know how much this thing cost originally, but I would bet you it was not cheap. LCD televisions of this size um, weren't always easy to get. And uh, of course, nowadays, it's like everybody has an LCD TV. Your sink in your bathroom probably has an LCD TV on it or an LCD screen, I should say. But uh, back in the day, this was a pretty big deal. And of course, it's a backlit LCD display as well. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna hook up this antique game system to it, and uh, we're gonna basically look at two different electronic products in the same video. And here it is, straight out of 1975, comes the Odyssey 100 video game console from Magnavox. This was so exciting back in its day. 
hours of gameplay and thrills and chills of excitement that your children experienced as they played this game system. As you can see on uh, both sides you have some uh, potentiometers also known as controls. So these were your control pads built into the system and uh, this is pretty much all you would see on your screen is what you see here on the pocket vision. A line going down the middle of the screen and your two little squares on the side as paddles. So you could move them to the left or right. You could move uh, up and down as well. See? And then uh, same thing on the left side. Oh, and there goes the ball. And we missed, so now we're out of luck. So there were two, uh, well, there's some controls here. On, let me show you what those are. You have a center button here, which actually does center the, the little goal there in the middle. Okay, and then you have a speed control, which controls how fast the square dot or ball moves across the screen. And right here is where you keep score. The system did not even keep score for you. So when you got, you know, uh, past the other guy, you would move that up to one. And same thing here. And then as your score increased, you would just keep moving these things up to the top. And then back down again. So electronically, they do absolutely nothing, but aesthetically, they are so exciting. So, uh, show you a little bit of the uh, the gameplay on this system here. If I can figure out how to get that ball to go out again, there it goes. Whoops, wrong button. Okay, I need that. I can go right over to the other guy. I think I have the right two controls now. Uh, this is game A, and we can also switch it over to game B, which looks like that. Isn't this amazing? And look, I can speed it up. And look at how challenging the game gets. It's unbelievable. I don't know about you, but this puts this puts Mario Brothers to shame. Absolutely. We have trapped the ball in a little space there. Let's see, I'm going to move this up just a little bit, and then I'm going to switch it to game A again. I didn't get my paddle up there in time. This is kind of confusing because the, the controllers on the left side don't match the controllers on the right. The buttons are different. So if you think you got it figured out, forget it. If you move over to the other side of the, the, uh, the net there, you are going to be lost. Okay, now how do we get that all to go? There we go. Here I am playing myself at table tennis. The sound effects are absolutely spectacular, as you can hear. And the sound effects are actually coming out of the console. Amazing. All right, let's open it up and see what's underneath the hood of this thing. So what I had to do when I bought it, it did not have a plug on the end of the wire, so I made one. And then I use this adapter to plug it into the, uh, the pocket vision here on the side. And it plays through channel 3 on the TV. So let's move the camera back a bit here. And what I'll do is show you what's inside. And apparently this unit operated on batteries. And uh, here's a really amazing thing. You see what that says right there? It says made in the USA. Imagine that, electronics manufactured in the United States. That's up there with the RCA video disc player. 
So inside here, you see this, it says, uh, no, do not remove cover. No user serviceable parts inside. Refer servicing to qualified service personnel. Well, it's nice of them to tell me that after I've gotten the cover removed. There's a, a bunch of little adjustments in here. You can change the fixed player horizontal position, horizontal frequency, vertical frequency. And then over here on this side, you have the channel three and four selector. And your little RF transmitter is uh, this little metal box back here. But this uh, cardboard comes off. So maybe that's what they were referring to as a cover. I can take this off and you can see all of the exciting electronics that make this thing happen right there before your very eyes. Amazing. So this is the first time I've actually used an Odyssey 1000 system and um, really took a long time to learn and figure out how to use it. I mean, it's very complicated. Uh, all the moves and stuff that you can do with the ball is just unbelievable. Way too many buttons. Yeah. Uh, as you can see, there's a, there's a red and a black wire here. So either there was a, a place for batteries here, or maybe there was a battery pack in there. I'm not sure, but I did not get that part with it. But I used a universal power supply to supply it 9 volts of DC power to uh, get it to work with my little pocket TV. So I hope you enjoyed this video. This is pretty much it. Uh, if you need more information about either of these products, you can probably search YouTube. I'm sure some gaming fanatic out there has spent hours talking about the history of the Odyssey 100 system. And um, I don't know, I may be the only guy who's made a video about the Pocket Vision TV that you see here, but maybe not. But uh, anyway, loved the stuff that Radio Shack made. They were always making innovative products, and uh, it's a shame that they are gone now, except only in a few parts of our country. If you like this video, please share it with a friend. Please subscribe to my channel and leave a comment below. Thanks for watching.